Good morning and welcome to the weekly roundup for the week ending Friday the 15th of October, where as always, we'll give you a quick roundup of the key stories throughout the various markets this week. Please don't forget to check out the link below if you'd also like to take a look at our various free stock market reports as they're produced. So this week has been a week of two halves. Earlier on in the week, stocks came under pressure as investors continue to digest the very weak non-farm payroll report for September. The jobs report saw just 194,000 jobs added in the US last month against the 500,000 expected. Fears over rising inflationary pressures amidst the ongoing energy crisis and supply chain disruptions also dragged down that sentiment. US inflation data and the release of the minutes from the latest Fed meeting were key focus points through the week. Despite US inflation unexpectedly rising to 5.4% and the FOMC minutes also pointing to the Fed starting to taper mid-November or December, the stock market actually rallied firmly across the second half of the week. It would appear that the markets are once again buying the Fed's position that inflation will be transitory. The week also saw the start of earnings season in the second half of the week with banks kicking off the show. Numbers have so far been impressive, which has added to the upbeat mood in the market in the latter part of the week. The S&P gained 1.2%, the Dow 0.6% and the tech-heavy Nasdaq rallied 1.6% across the week. In Europe, the DAX gained 1.7% and the FTSE jumped 1.5%. In the Forex markets this week, the US dollar is set to end the week 0.1% of a percent lower, snapping a five-week winning run. Forex investors are shrugging off higher inflation and the Fed indicating it will start tapering bond purchases in November or December, in what appeared to be a buy-the-rumour, sell-the-fact trade. The pound is set to rise half, half of a percent against the dollar, building on gains of half of a percent in the previous week. The pound has pushed higher amidst growing expectations that the Bank of England could hike interest rates as soon as December. And as for the euro, well, after five straight weeks of losses, the euro is set to book mild gains of around 0.2 of a percent against the dollar. This is more actually to do with the greenback's weakness. The ECB is still behind the Fed and the BOE with regards to moving towards tighter monetary policy. In the commodities markets this week, oil prices are set to end the week with gains of over 2.5%, marking the eighth consecutive week of gains. Prices reached fresh multi-year highs as the energy crisis continued, sending natural gas and coal prices higher, boosting oil's appeal as a power-generating alternative. The International Energy Agency also increased their demand outlook for 2021 and 2022. And finally, gold has risen over 2.2% this week in its largest weekly rise in over five months as inflation jitters drive the precious metal, of course, the classic inflation hedge, higher. In the stock markets here in the UK, the Hutt Group has been on a roller coaster this week tumbling 32% across the week, its fifth straight week of declines. The stock has lost over half its value in September and October so far. The sell-off this week was prompted by a disastrous capital markets event, which failed to address analysts' and investors' concerns over the ingenuity business, what will remain once beauty is spun off. On the other hand, the national house builder Barrett Developments rallied over 7% after posting strong earnings this week. Sales are back to pre-COVID levels and the house builder said that it was also on track to meet 2022 and medium term targets. Finally, over in the US, banks have impressed so far. The likes of JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America have released some eye-watering numbers thanks in part to a record quarter of M&A and deal-making. Morgan Stanley reported revenue growth of 67% year-on-year, whilst Bank of America saw banking fees rise 23% in what has been a very encouraging start to earnings season. So there you have it. As always, thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of our not just bi-weekly roundups, but also our regular special market videos as they're re released. 
And of course, don't forget our very useful app. If you're an investor, get it downloaded right now. Finally, as always, if you have any questions, just pop them in the comments section below. In the meantime, from all of us here at Atlantic Capital Markets, have yourself a great weekend.